Pittsburgh Steelers fans, how's it going? Good evening. Hope you had a great day too of the of the draft, the NFL draft. I'm coming here from the city of champions, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in my hotel room. I'm excited about tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm gonna be going out to the uh, the draft party. Uh, I'm hoping to meet some of the new players. Speaking of new players, we just took in the third round, uh, Demarvin Leal, defensive uh, interior lineman out of A and M, Texas A and M. Great solid choice. He's a high motor guy, heavy handed guy, not going to quit. Uh, you know, he's he reminds me of a young Cameron Hayward in uh, and, and not just in the way he plays, but the way he kind of looks to his physique, his size, the way he plays the game, the whole nine yards. I think this is going to be a great value pick for the defense. I think that this is going to help us, you know, solidify the running game. Uh, the, on the defensive side, it's going to help us, you know, especially in this um, in the AFC North when we have the likes of uh, Lamar Jackson, you have the likes of a Deshaun Watson, a, a, a running back like Chubb, you know, when when we're facing or even um, J.K. Dobbins. So when we're facing teams like that that are going to be pushing us and coming after us pretty hard in the run, we definitely need to have a better running game, especially one better than last year. We fell in at the end probably towards the bottom three when it comes to the defensive rushing side. And so with this pick here, it's going to definitely help us out. Um, he's going to – he never quits. The guy has a motor, and I love that about him. You know, he was expected to go up higher, um, but, he, you know, I'm glad of where we got him. He kind of reminds me a lot of like a um, – well, last year when we got Quincy Roche – you know, he was a uh, six-round pick that had was projected in the third round and had fallen. I think this guy here was projected to be way higher than this had it not been for the character issues and, and would have definitely been in the first round. So great solid pick, great pick to shore up the defensive line. Mike Tomlin's going to make sure that um, with any of these guys that those character issues aren't going to come back. I mean, he controlled or contained uh, Antonio Brown for many, many years and – not even the great goat um, of a quarterback in Tom Brady could handle uh, Antonio Brown for more than a couple of years without him going butt crazy and losing his clothes on the field there in, uh, in MetLife Stadium. And so, with that being said, back to Mr. Leal, he's going to be, uh, I think he's going to be a sure pick. He's going to play quite a bit. He's going to be in that rotation. He's going to spell out Cam Ward Hayward. He's going to spell out Tyson Alualu. And, and and the good thing about him is he can move inside at the nose because he's bigger than what we currently have and, and warmly. And he can play out in the uh, in the edge um, and rush the quarterback that way. I, I think this is going to be a, it's a solid pick. Um, right now, the only hole that I think we have left is going to be in the running back position to back up and who's going to be spelling out Najee Harris. Najee Harris had so many touches last year, well over 300, and he cannot be doing that every year. It's just not going to – the numbers don't make sense. He's going to end up eventually getting hurt. He's going to end up eventually um, – right, we're going to run the tires off the wheel, so to speak, on this guy. And, and he's a guy that's got to be here for years to come. He's a uh, prolific player and somebody that, in my mind, that I think that's going to be uh, a leader in this offense. And we need to make sure that we control – uh, and manage his carries, just similar to like we control and manage Cam Hayward's um, plays on the defensive side, and we've been able to secure that with the drafting of Louder Milk last year and the drafting of Leal this year. That's definitely going to help Cameron Hayward and extend his career, uh, and it's going to help us later on in the later end of the season. You know, when we're getting into those week 15, 16, 17, 18 now with the 17th game extension, uh, it's definitely going to help us with this rotation, keeping our guys fresh, keeping our defensive line in. That way, when we are going up against these high-powered, high-running offenses, we can match up with them much better and in a uh, in a situation where we can actually dominate on that side of the field. I'm super excited. I can't wait for tomorrow. I'm coming in live from the City of Champions, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, Penny uh, Kenny Pickett was just at the airport that I just left not too long ago. It's crazy. It's insane uh, to think that. And I'm hoping to meet him tomorrow. We'll see what happens. If not, it's okay. I understand. I'll be coming back later on this year to see them play a couple of more times. And I'm looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to the season. I think that we have solidified three um, starters that we were needing. And right now, the biggest hole, in my opinion, is going to be the backup running back and potentially a backup safety for the future. All we have right now is Terrell Edmonds. And at the $2 million a year, or, or even less than that, from what I understand, he's only counting less than $2 million towards the cap. We have, you know, gentlemen uh, that are backing him up, making more towards the 
the um, they're costing more towards our 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 um, our total cap than what Terrell Edmonds is. And so he's a steal. I'm glad he stayed. He could have left. He could have gone to the Bengals. He could have gone to Miami or wherever it was. He could have played again with uh, Mike Hilton and, and and gone with the Cincinnati Bengals who were just in the Super Bowl. They were just in the Super Bowl. You can't get – they were the AFC champions. You can't get any higher than that other than winning the, 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 the whole thing. And so, you know, he had an opportunity to go with the team that just recently made an appearance and yet chose to come back to the Pittsburgh Steelers. That shows a little bit of loyalty. That shows a little bit of, of character from him that I think that we should continue to um, – not just like what's what I'm looking for in this situation. It's not take advantage of it, but it's something that we should really, really like about him. Because at the end of the day, you know, when you have, especially in this day and age, when there is no loyalty, there is no um, people, players staying, taking taking less, and um, taking a team friendly deal so that way they can get better around. I mean, it's it's definitely changing. Uh, we're looking more into a uh, me type of uh you know players that are coming in and and looking for the money and rightfully so the nfl isn't a uh some some folks say it stands for not for long the average nfl player is going to be in the in the league for less than four years less than their original rec their original contract is is signed for you know when you get a rookie you know um when you get a rookie player in it's usually for a four-year deal unless they're a first round pick and they have a fifth year option so you know when your lifespan or your expectancy of your career is supposed to be less than what your first contract is, it's naturally going to be all about, you know, the players are going to turn to me. But I think in this draft here, the Steelers have done good. We've um, we've put in players in holes that we needed. We, we solidified the quarterback position for the future. Uh, I'm not saying that Kenny Pickett is going to be the next Dan Marino coming out of pit. However... I don't think he's going to be this bum that everybody seems to be talking about. This guy is, he reminds me a lot of Mac Jones coming out last year. Mac Jones was highly criticized, highly talked about due to his weight or his appearance of what his weight looked like. Um, you know, the guy moved very quickly. He was fluid. He ran, I think, a 4'8 or something like that. He's not slow. And so, you know, I think Kenny Pickett is this year's Mac Jones. And if he can kind of, perform to that type of standard, then um, I think we're going to be all right. I think he'll beat out uh, Mitchell Trubisky. It's going to be a battle. That's what it's going to be. And I think that it's going to be a, it's going to be a good one. And I can't wait to see it. This is going to be the second year in a row where I am excited for preseason football. You know, last year or the year before during the pandemic, there was no preseason football. We didn't get to see the likes of a Mason Rudolph. We didn't get to see the likes of a, a McFarlane or or any of our back backup receivers um, come in and show what they can do, or any of our backup players that come in and show what they can do. There was absolutely no preseason and um, two years ago. And so last year was exciting. We got to see what potentially the future was going to look like, given Ben was only going to play one preseason game. So we're going to see what the, an offense would look with Mason or even with a Dwayne Haskins, may he rest in peace. Uh, and so we, we saw that. Uh, I feel that the Steelers have seen these quarterbacks for a while. We don't get to see them in practice. They went up and they chose a quarterback in the first round. That's for a reason. I think it's a good one. I think we're going to have a good year. I think we're going to be competitive. Uh, I'm not saying we're going to win the North, although our schedule isn't very tough. It really isn't. Outside of the North, um, you know, we play the Raiders from the West, which, in my opinion, would probably be the worst team in the West right now. We're looking at paper today. Uh, I think that the Broncos and the um, the Chiefs and, and the Chargers are definitely higher favorites than the, the Raiders. So I'm not too concerned with the West. I think that the West is going to beat themselves up. And it's going to leave an opportunity or a lane open for us to move in and um, potentially take advantage and getting into the playoffs. But I'm speaking way ahead of... <laughs> where we're at at this present time tomorrow it's draft party it's everybody's christmas day um where everybody gets to open their presents kind of see their full draft and see what's going on uh, i'm excited to be there or here in pittsburgh i'm excited to be going to heinz field and being a part of that draft party i look forward to everybody um having it if anybody has any questions or any concerns please leave them in the comments as soon as i get back into texas i'll be going back live so that way we can um get back to our normal routine <laughs> Please share this and also hit that notification button and hit the bell. Um, if you do not hit the bell, then 
the algorithm won't work and it won't notify you that I'm going live. You'll end up just seeing it later on as it shows up. So if you want to come on live, you want to communicate, you want to conversate with me about, you know, Steelers football, hit that notification, join the live, share the content. Let's make this channel grow. Um, we're looking forward to it. Here we go, Steelers.